Hi there, this is RCCG Cornerstone Love Pro Media Team. Um, we present to you 18th of February 2024's message. Be blessed as you listen. Do give a like and a follow and do subscribe to the, the YouTube page. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. And we appreciate our children even as they go to their, to their classes. Praise the Lord. How are we doing? Ask your neighbor, how are you doing? Did you get a response? What was the response? Is your neighbor doing okay? Praise the Lord. Again, we want to appreciate God for all the privilege and the opportunity that he has given us to be once again in his presence. The Bible declares that in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are what? There are pleasures forevermore. Praise the Lord. Um, I just remembered something. Um, Sam, come please. Yes. Peace, come. It just occurred to me now. Yes. Where is peace? You. Don't worry, you didn't do anything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, you'll be surprised why I called you out, please. Um, you know, I went, I went last week Sunday, and I was watching the service again. You know, every time, every time I finish preaching to you, I'll also go and sit down and preach to myself. Uh, uh, so, I discovered that when I was acknowledging people that have been, you know, helping us to craft the vision and so many other things, I omitted peace, your name, and I also omitted Sam. And I said, wow, that's a great very room. Uh, please, uh, wonderful people helping us. Uh, and we must understand this, we must never take people for granted. And that's true. We must never take people for granted. When people do things, we must appreciate it. And even when you make mistakes as a leader, you acknowledge that you have made a mistake. And do what? You rectify it. So please, pardon me. Eh? I don't, I, how, 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 and you people were in church. So how that escaped my memory, that's what I don't know. Well, wonderful people. Please, can we appreciate them? Can we appreciate them? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, please. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we ready for God's word? Are we ready? Can we be on our feet? Can you ask the Lord this afternoon to speak to you? Ask the Lord to speak to you. Ask him to speak to you. The Bible declares that we have come unto Mount Zion, we have come unto the, the, com, uh, the innumerable company of angels, we have come into the spirit of just men that is made perfect, we have come into Jesus who is the mediator of the new covenant, just go ahead and praise him, there are angels in our midst. The presence of God is here. We are not here to look at the face of a man. We are not here to look at the face of anybody. You are not here primarily to see somebody that you have not seen over the past one week. You are here to have an encounter with God. You are here to have an encounter with God. Jacob said, I will not let you go except you bless me, except you do something in my life. I don't know whether that is your heart cry this afternoon. The reason why you came, you're telling God, Lord, I will not leave your presence except you do something remarkable in my life. Except you do something that is tangible. Something that, Lord, I can reckon with. I don't know if that is your heart cry this afternoon. Can you just go ahead and cry to the Lord? Lord, give me an encounter. Give me an encounter. The Bible declares that everyone who asks will always receive. Everyone that seeks will always find. Everyone that knocks, the door is always open to him. 
I can't hear your voice. I can't hear your voice. I can't hear your voice. The Bible declares that the expectations of the righteous shall not be disappointed. But you have to register that expectation before the Almighty. In Numbers 14 verse 28, it says, As surely as you have said to my hearing, that is what I will do to you. As surely as you have said to my hearing, God is waiting for you to say something to him this afternoon. Waiting for you to make a demand. Waiting for you to ask. Waiting for you to, uh, you know, make a demand on his person this afternoon. Will you go ahead and ask the Lord, Father, give me a visitation. The Bible declares, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, give me an encounter of a lifetime in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am in your presence this afternoon. Let my life not be the same. I'm in your presence this afternoon. Let my life not be the same. I'm in your presence this afternoon. Let my life not be the same. I'm in your presence this afternoon. Let my life not be the same. Do something remarkable in my life, oh God. Give me an encounter of a lifetime in the name of Jesus. Oh, Kabrani Sufina Angranes Kuvananesh. Lebranto Cavalia Susia Atelia Bahando Vena. Lerovende Cosi Venil. I cobrane cofetelia casunteli bragados, jefe que toco benaila, lebran toco si ve en gracatuna minte labrados, jeco pena, lebre de coba si gracatum pena, lebran to peni si vrane cabos, jom brane copana, ale doco veneman to librada cosi vanamante, elabran toco pena niscu venemanta. Ale brado siva, a son de ka, ale rombene suvana, e soy compra ne copana, ale do copena suzia, a so kate le branto copananish. Lord, give me an encounter of a lifetime, O God. Change my life, transform me, O God. Do what only you alone can do in my life. Let my life never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus, for you sent your word. Your word will always heal them. Your word will always deliver them out of your destructions. Let the sent word, O God, Jehovah, bring about a dramatic turnaround in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We vow that, Lord, we will give you the praise. We vow that we will give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the music fades and the soul Something that's a fault that will mess your heart. I bring you more than the song, but the song in itself is not what you have required.
It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Oh, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Father, we have called you the miracle working God. The Bible declares that you have not called the seeds of Jacob to seek you in vain. We have left all to be in your presence. Walk your wonders in our lives. Do wonders in our life this afternoon. Walk miracles in our life this afternoon change and transform every life this afternoon. Father, we vow that you will take all the glory. We thank you because our lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought I cited uh, Sister Becky somewhere. Where is she? Oh, praise God. Good to have you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And welcome to every other person. Tell yourself I'm important. I'm a VIP. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there are some things that you don't just have to wait for somebody to tell you. Uh, because sometimes when you wait for people, Sometimes you may end up waiting what? In vain. Uh, so you tell yourself. Hallelujah. Uh, today I want us to consider a very important um, subject. Um, 
in our journey with God. You know, one of the things I believe that for us as believers, how we know God determines how far we would go in life. And that's very important. How we know God will determine how far we will make progress in life. There are so many of us that have been born again for several years. And oftentimes we look at the result in our lives and they are not they are not commensurate to the amount of spiritual you know activities that go on in our lives and oftentimes many of us will become frustrated and this has also made some people to turn their back on God but one of the things that we fail to understand or fail to realize is that how we get to know this God that we talk about will then determine the kind of success, the kind of results that we experience in life. Um, God is never a bad God, irrespective of whatever anybody says. You know, my experience can never be good enough to begin to judge the character of God. God will always be God. Your experience, irrespective of what your experiences may be, will never be good enough to judge the character of God. And oftentimes, these are some of the things that you know, we don't realize. And many of us, we come to that conclusion that God is a bad God because our experiences make us to believe so. But we must then uh, uh, realize that what many of us lack most of the times is this thing I call spiritual knowledge. I want us to quickly turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Sorry, let me get it out of the one John chapter one. Beginning from verse one. One John chapter one and beginning from verse one. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. I want us to notice the progression. It says, that which was from the beginning, which we had heard. So it all started by hearing. It all started by hearing. But then from hearing, it progressed to the Bible says that which we have seen with our eyes from hearing what was being heard now became visible. It wasn't just hearing alone again. He, they went to the stage of this thing becoming visible to them. And then the Bible says, and then our hands have handled it of the word of God. So what became, what first was heard became visible. And then from it becoming visible, it became tangible. They could handle it. It could become their experience. And in our journey with God, I want to believe that this is where God wants every single one of us to get to. And because I want to spend my time this afternoon by God's grace, you know, for us discussing on the stages of spiritual knowledge. There are various levels of our spiritual knowledge. And oftentimes what happens is that majority of the believers we camp on just number one of it. And because we camp on number one of it, you know, we think that things will happen. And oftentimes we get frustrated. 
So we're going to begin looking at this thing because I was speaking with the Ignite, I was in Ignite Fellowship last week Thursday, and I said one of the challenges that we have with English language is because English language, of, unfortunately, is deficient. You know, the Bible was translated from Greek into English, Greek and Hebrew into English language. And oftentimes, some of the of the of the exact meaning were actually lost out because you know in trying to find the best word that actually describes something you just make do with what you think okay this is just what you think you know it can explain what you're trying to communicate at that point in time so oftentimes the meaning of that is lost you know we were looking at the subject of love and i said to them you know in, in greek Love means so many things. So in Greek, somebody will not tell you, I love you. He will not tell you, I either, I either feel you or I stego you or I eros you or I agape you. Because these four things are the meaning of love in the Greek language. So in the Greek, original Greek language, somebody can't just tell you, I love you. Because love means so many things. What particular kind of love are you talking about? So, but if somebody then he tells you, I feel you, so because he then understands what that exact meaning of that word is, then he can then be able to relate the kind of love you're talking about. But unfortunately, in meaning English language, is not like that. And this is the challenge that many of us have sometimes. So, and that's why many of us, we get disappointed. Because then somebody then tells you, I love you. So what kind of love are you talking about? Are you talking about the agape love? Are you talking about the stego love? Are you talking about the filial love? Are you talking about eros? Which particular one are you talking about? And unfortunately, it's the same thing when it has to do with the knowledge of God. So when we talk about the knowledge of God, there are... There are so many things in the Greek language that were used to describe that word knowledge. And unfortunately, for, for some of us as believers, and like I said, we encamp on just the first stage of it. And we believe because, you know, um, we know these things, we've heard it, then um, automatically, automatically it must begin to work in our lives. But it's not so. So the Bible tells us, it says, that which we have heard from the beginning, that which we have done what? We have seen, and then our hands have handled it. That is what we commit to you, the word of life. It's not just, it's not just, it's not just hearing alone. It's not just seeing alone. It must become, it must become your experience. So we want to briefly look at the stages of spiritual knowledge. The first stage of spiritual knowledge that we have is what is called in the Greek language gnosis. G N O I S I S. G N O S I S. G N O S I S. Gnosis. This is just the general knowledge of God. This is where we know God just by what we have heard about God. It's just a passive knowledge. There are people who are not believers. There are people who don't know God, but they have heard so many things about God. Even for some of us, before we became born again, there were so many things we've heard about God. There are people that have not been even into the four walls of a church, but there are so many things that they have heard about God. So that is the first stage. And unfortunately, what many of us don't realize is that at this stage, it doesn't really, mean, it doesn't really make any impact in your life.
And that's true. Because you can know that God heals, God saves. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just something that you've heard. It doesn't make any meaning to you. It doesn't impact your life in any way. And this is then where the problem is because many of us, we study the Bible and you even hear people priding themselves of as good as that is, you know, we labor to, you know, read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You know, we spend time every day, every single day. You wake up in the morning, you study your work. But most times what we do is just to get that head knowledge about God. And unfortunately, that head knowledge does not produce any result in our lives. So we think because we have heard, we have heard, we have read so many things about God, we have even heard people preach about this God. There are people, like I said, they are not believers, but if you call them to speak about God, they can tell you some things about God. Ask them, are they believers? They will tell you no. The reason why they are able to do that is because they've been in an environment where God is being spoken about. I can know, I can tell you I know Sister Peace. But it's another thing to know about her. I can know her because she just comes to church, so I see her. But do I really know about her? Do I know what she does? Do I know whether she's married or not? Do I know how many children she has? Do I know where she lives? So, but you can ask me, do I know Sister Pisa? And I will tell you yes. So this is where many of us, we, 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 we stop in our pursuit, in our knowledge of God. So we think because we read about God, because we hear so much about God, then, then we believe that that knowledge alone can produce a result in our life. Absolutely no. So if you now sit me down then to begin to probe me, okay, you say you know this lady. I'll now tell you yes. Where does she live? I'll now begin to look at you. How many children does she have? I begin to look at you. Oh, but you told me you know about her. So that is the mentality that most of the believers carry. So ask, ask an average believer, ask an average Christian, do you know about this God? They will, they will boldly beat their chest and they will tell you they know about God. So unfortunately, we stop at that first stage. But it's just a simple general knowledge, passive knowledge about God which doesn't produce any result in our lives. So we've heard about it. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, <coughs> Second Peter chapter 1 and... Second Peter chapter one. Just give me one moment, please. One and verse five. Let's read together. It says, "And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge." It says. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. The knowledge he's talking about is this first stage, gnosis. It's this first stage that actually does, you know, somebody, can, somebody may not, I remember um, many years, many years ago, you know, um, in, in my quest, actually, to be able to, um, 
you know, preach this gospel, maybe to Muslims. I remember someone, um, I think the hall I wanted to do my wedding and the man that was, you know, uh, that owns the, that owns the, um, in Leicester, the man is a Muslim. So he said, you know, he actually gave me, actually gave me a Quran. You know, because I was trying to share my faith with the man. Do you understand? And he, 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 he listened to me. He listened to me and then said, okay, he's going to give me a Quran. But the point I'm trying to make, so I collected the Quran from, from him anyway. Do you understand? Um, but unfortunately, I didn't read it. But if I had read that Quran, you know, read, maybe read some pages in it, you know, you know, I can sit down and I could converse easily with a Muslim. And the person may think I'm a Muslim just by simple reading it. So somebody can pick this Bible. He doesn't have to be a Christian and can read it and can say some things about it because he has read it, because he has heard about God. But is that knowledge profitable to the person? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. So many of us as believers, we don't realize this. So we are satisfied that we come to church. We hear preachers. We hear people talk about God. We are satisfied that we read our Bible. Ask people now here, did you read your Bible before coming to church? Almost everybody may raise their hand. We read our Bible. But then does that equate to knowledge, having that experience about God? Absolutely no. So we stop at this first stage. So the second stage is what I call idol. E-I-D-O. E-I-D-O. So you mature from being from gnosis to idol. In this place is to perceive with your eyes, to notice, to discern, to discover. This is the level where you become aware of what you have heard about God. So it, it, it's, no longer, it's no longer a scientific knowledge anymore. You are now aware of the things that you're hearing about God. The Holy Spirit begins to, you know, bring meaning and clarity into the things that you have read. And that's why the Bible says something. It says, a carnal man cannot understand the things of God. Neither can he discern them. Why? Because they are what? They are spiritually discerned. Nobody, whether big or small, no man, whether huge or whatever, nobody can accurately, accurately be able to honestly discern this Bible if the Holy Spirit does not give you understanding. So it is in this second stage that what you now hear, the Holy Spirit now begins to bring clarity and understanding to what you have read. It now begins to make meaning. There are some of us here that are students. Somebody, something you've been trying to understand before, and all of a sudden, somebody now brings clarity to that thing. And the next thing you now say, I see. That's the time that you now, is, what, the, what you have been trying all this while, the person is now bringing clarity to it to you. Say, oh, I see. But all the while, you have not been seeing. You were seeing, but you were not seeing. So this is where then the word of God begins to make meaning to you. So because somebody, I can, there are so many things that we talk about God. We quote in the scriptures that God can do. But because the Holy Spirit has not brought the consciousness to our spirit, 
That word does not profit us in any way. Ask yourself the question, then how could a man lose all his children and bring up a song that says, it is well with my soul? It is because the word of God, the Holy Spirit has now brought clarity. But somebody can go through the same thing and ask God the question, God, where were you when I lost my children? So what is the difference? The Holy Spirit has now ministered the word of God. And that word has become active and alive into somebody's life. But to somebody else, the person is asking, God, where were you when I lost my children? They've read the same scriptures. But the Holy Spirit is now bringing clarity. And this is what Job understood when Job told, he said, oh. remember the wife told Job, he said, how can you go through all these things and still do what? And still do what? And still maintain your integrity. He said, curse God and do what? And die. So you now see the reason why some people get frustrated. He said, but I have been serving God. So because what they now read in the scriptures doesn't tally with what is the outcomes of their life. So they are questioning. You tell me, ah, but you say if I serve the Lord, he will bless my bread, he will bless my waters, I will not be barren. But I look at my life, there is barrenness everywhere. I look at my life, nothing is moving forward. And they can't reconcile the school scriptures. It's because the Holy Spirit has not brought clarity to that space, the same word. So somebody else that the Holy Spirit has brought clarity to that word can still be going through the same situation. And he knows it's only a question of time. So that you heard it doesn't mean that understanding has come. That you heard it doesn't mean clarity has come. So that's why we wait on the Holy Spirit because if the Holy Spirit does not bring clarity, what you only heard, you know, there is no difference between you and somebody that has let, read another book. There's absolutely no difference. So you now understand why Paul was praying in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. Ephesians, let's begin from there. So you see the prayer that Paul was praying. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, sees not... Which one did you flash before? Was it 15? Sorry? Let's, let's, sorry? Okay. The second part of it. So, this was Paul's prayer. It says, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Let's go. What was the prayer? Please, let's go. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let's keep going further, please. Verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And, the, and verse 19, please. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power? So that the eyes of your understanding, let it be enlightened. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That I can sit on this scripture and then the Holy Spirit begins to incubate it and bring understanding and clarity. So you can go through some things and then you can then begin to relate with what you have read. At that time, it's no longer gnosis. It's, it's what is called idol. You will now become aware of what you're reading. In John chapter 13, um, verse 1, please. John chapter 13 and verse 1. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Verse 2, please. 
He says, and supper being ended, the devil having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Verse 3. Verse 3, please. He says, Jesus doing what? Knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. He knew. That was why when the apostles were trying to fight for he said, forget about this. Forget about this. When the Holy Spirit begins to bring clarity in some of the things that you read, that's when you can go through some things and you tell people will begin to ask you, what is you? The Holy Spirit is now bringing understanding to what you have read. I say, don't worry. Even though he slays me, I will still trust him. You don't say that just with only head knowledge, no. David became aware of this. He said, yeah, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will do what? I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I know your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Holy Spirit has brought... Look, have, how many times have we quoted the scripture? Is this Isaiah 42? The Bible says, when thou passest through the fires, what will happen? Have we not quoted that so many times? Yeah. But you then go through challenges, and the first question you're asking yourself, where was God? The reason why you're asking that question is because the Holy Spirit has not brought clarity to that scripture to you. So you think God is not in the midst of your problem, that God has left you alone. So another man then can say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What is the difference? One is speaking from the place of understanding. The Holy Spirit has ministered to his heart. He has clarity, he has understanding to what he has read. So, the challenge is then I can stop at that, at that first level. And I'm, ah, God, what is happening? Can't you see my life? But I confess this. You can confess it. for, And, and, and unfortunately, this is, this is what happens to many of us. What many of us confess as the word of God. We confess it. We, we, we pray with it. We speak about it. We talk about it every time. The challenge is, is not coming from a depth of understanding. It's just a head knowledge. Anybody can say the same thing. Have you not heard where the Bible says, even the devils do what? Eh? Eh? The devils do what? They also believe and do what? So don't tell me you, so anybody can confess the same thing. The difference that is from, from, from what depth are you confessing that scriptures from? So the first level is the first level is the level of gnosis. You proceed to idol, and then the third level is a place of epignosis. EPI, just add EPI and then to the first, epignosis. It says that which we have heard, we have seen it, is become visible and then to the third stage of it becomes tangible. We can, we've held it with our hands. See, that is what we commit to you. So epignosis, it's where you now begin to experience what you have discovered about God. So, I've read in the scriptures. Let me just take for example one scripture. The Bible says, you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my infirmities. The chastisement of your peace was upon me, and by your stripes I am healed. So, the Holy Spirit begins to brood upon that scripture. And now give me clarity to what that, on the, the, what that means. So I can then be sick and I can declare that by his stripes I am healed. 
And I declare that scriptures, I see it in my life manifesting. It becomes now my experience. So it's gotten to the point of, you know, what I'm aware of to what has now become my experience. So when I tell somebody that God heals, I'm not just speaking from a point of head knowledge. I'm not just speaking of because the Holy Spirit has brought it to my understanding. It's because I have now experienced it. It's become my experience. So I can tell you that God heals is because I have waited on God. I trusted and I believe God. And God healed me of my sickness. So it's not just a confession alone. If I tell you that God, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. And I waited on God, not because I was looking on any man. And I saw that word come to pass in my life. It has become my experience. So when I tell somebody, God can supply all your needs. I'm not just speaking because I saw it in the Bible. I'm speaking because it has become what? My experience. He says, so that which you have heard. That which you have seen, seen with your eyes, then you will have what? Handled the word of God. It is what we commit to you. So there are so many things that we talk about, but majority of those things have not become what? Our experience. So we can't match them. We can't match them. We, we read in the Bible, God says, a, a cattle on a thousand hills are mine. But many of us, the truth is that many of us are struggling financially. So, but we begin to ask the question, and that we ask those questions. But is it that the Bible is lying? No, the God is, Bible, remember what the Bible says. God is not a man that he does what? That he will tell lies. He's not the son of man that he will repent. He said, there is nothing that he has spoken that he's not able to do. But the truth is that we have not come to the consciousness of those words. And because we have not come to the consciousness of those words, they have not become our experience. And because they have not become our experience, so we can't tally those two things. So we speak about so many things, but it's not our reality. Hey, God can lift. We say it, but God has God lifted us. No. So we go back. And sometimes we even doubt. Say, are you sure these people are not even deceiving us? And that's the reason why some people have thrown away their Bible. Because their life can't match what they are, what? Their life can't match what the Bible is saying. So they say, is either this God is lying or what? Or their experience is not telling them the truth. There are people who were once in the faith. There were people who were once Christians. But their experiences made them to do what? To drop this Bible. You meet them, they'll tell you, look, my, my brother, look, this thing you're carrying, we've, uh, before you even started, we've done this thing. <laughs> we've done this thing. So it's not become there, so they can't, they, they can't relate with it. I've met a man before in town center, I said, look, I, he said, where was God? I was praying, and my, my, my brother finally died. He said, so don't tell me about this God. But the truth is that that is the reality of many of us as believers. We may not openly confess it, but we go back, and things are not matching. They don't match. And the reason why they are not matching is because we then camp in that first stage of gnosis. Ah, but I have this, I have heard this thing, I've confessed it. So what is happening? No. It's not just, it's not just hearing it alone, it's not just confessing it alone. You must allow the whole, that's why we pray. That's why we pray. You read these things and you sit upon the, and the Holy Spirit begins to bring clarity. Like I, I gave all that explanation. Something that you have read on your own. And the, somebody now sits down and says, oh, don't worry, I will teach you this thing. And by the time the person finishes it, he says, oh, wow, so this is it. Say, so I, now, I now see. You were not seeing before. So what the Holy Spirit does is now makes you to begin to see. That you can sit upon that word. Like Job can say, if I know, you know, he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know he lives. 
It's only a question of time. You don't talk like that when you have not had that consciousness being brought to you by the Holy Spirit. You can't speak like that. So here, we keep, you know, seeking, engaging God. And the more you seek him, you remember Matthew chapter 6, I'll, I'll round up with, with, with this scripture because my time is up. I want us to, um, we'll continue because there are five stages. And by God's grace, that is the plan of God that we get to the final stage. That we get to the final, every single one of us. And you go here that you're not just, it's not just no, that ah, I can, there are people, do you know there, do you know, <laughs> do you know there are people who, who, who's their, their, their work, eh? You know, they are, um, they are professors of uh, theology. Eh? But do you know some of them are not born again? Do you know? But they teach you this Bible. They are not born again. It's not Quran. They are, they are teaching you Bible. So it's only a mental knowledge. It's only a scientific knowledge. That knowledge does not profit them. So they can teach you those things, but they themselves don't believe it. Can we just rise up on our feet? Just one prayer point. Ask the Lord, Lord, help me to know you. Help me to know you. Help me to know you. Beyond head knowledge, beyond mental knowledge, beyond scientific knowledge, the true knowledge of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, just go ahead and ask him, just go ahead and ask him. Go ahead and ask him. You now understand that mental knowledge alone is not enough. Scientific knowledge alone is not enough. That you are aware that you know the things that God can do is not enough. Just ask him. Lemo kafani sika lamande kobena. Lero veni kazuza. Eleke brento kovana ziziki tiki panahata. Le revende ko si vanamanta. Ele brento ko vete ke baku souvene. Ay lombre ko so vanamanta. I choose the way of the Lord. For the ways of the Lord. Is a way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the way of. I choose the way of. I choose the way of the. I choose the way. Of the Lord, for the ways of the Lord is a way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Heavenly Father, that's our heart cry. That you will bring us to the experiential knowledge of you. We are tired of mental knowledge. We are tired of scientific knowledge. We are tired of just settling at the things that we know that God cannot do, that God can do, which has not become our experience. We ask that, Lord, this afternoon that you will move us further. That, Lord, you will move us a step further. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that the things that we have heard, it will become visible to us, and then it will become tangible. In the name of the Lord Jesus, 
help everyone here to walk in the experience, ex experience uh, uh, ex ex experiential knowledge of you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will help us. We ask that you will help us. We ask that you will help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let our lives never be the same. That as we seek you, we will find you. That as we knock, the door will be open to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, turn our lives around, O oh God. Cause us to truly become that which you have ordained us to be. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let no one here fall short of that, O oh God, which you have made them to be. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we go into this week, we decree, declare, Father, that your presence goes ahead of us. You level the mountains before us. The crooked paths will be made straight. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree and we declare, Father, that in the name of the Lord Jesus, this week doors will be opened unto us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. We thank you because we receive it. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a wonderful week. Please, if you want to see me, just give me five, ten minutes. I just want to just greet people, um, you know, with the leaders. Please don't forget um, my armor bearers. Please, let's try and... Please, don't be in a hurry to leave. Eh? Let's, let's, uh, Thank you for watching. Chat and Hope interact. you were blessed while listening. If you need any more information about RCCG Cornerstone Loft, bro, please check our website as displayed on the screen. Have a lovely day.